Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity. My name is uh, Nikolai Sopko, Chief Scientific Officer at uh, Player DTE. And uh, it's a pleasure to uh, talk to you a little bit about our technology today. Um, we are a public company. This is our forward-looking statement. And a little bit about Player DTE. Uh, we are a tissue-focused uh, bio biotechnology company that leverages the patient's own cells and ability to heal itself uh, to really generate new uh, tissue. Um, we are located in Salt Lake City, where our FDA-registered biomanufacturing facility is, and we have about over 150 employees. Looking at the company history, the uh, initial uh, patent application um, describing the technology was uh, filed uh, in late 2014. Uh, the company uh, formed through a reverse merger as a public company towards the latter half of 2016. Um, we registered our first commercially available product, Skin TE, uh, at the latter half of 2017 and treated our first patient and started our first trial shortly thereafter. And then in 2018, we've uh, continued to expand, uh, move to our larger uh, facility where we are now, as well as register our second product, Osteo TE, at the end of 2018. And so looking at our product pipeline, we have Skin TE uh, there at the top, which is uh, in our commercialization phase. We have uh, five current trials that I'll go into a little bit later, as well as several in planning. Uh, we have Osteo TE that I mentioned that we registered, and we have several related technology derivative products that I won't really be able to go into today. And so Skin TE, uh, which is our first uh, FDA registered product, um, is unique in the sense that it's able to regenerate uh, functionally normal skin. And so how does it work? Um, so this is the overall process. A provider is given one of our harvest boxes, um, uh, which has all the uh, shipping materials that they need. They then take a small, full thickness, healthy skin biopsy from the patient. So this is essentially akin to being able to remove a mole. Uh, so this can be done in the office, um, at the bedside. Um, and then that little harvest site is sutured closed. That's then put into the shipping conical and saline that's provided, um, and then put into the, our self-cooling nanocool system. Um, uh, that's provided with the harvest box to make it easier for the provider to ship this back to us. This is overnight um, shipped to our facility in Salt Lake City where it's then processed into Skin TE. And our actual cycle times, our sort of hands-on times, if you will, is about four hours or so. So for providers that are located in uh, Salt Lake City itself, they can have this back the same day. We then ship this, um, uh, the Skin TE back to the uh, provider, um, but they do have the option of sort of, if they wanna schedule out their um, procedure of uh, having 14 days from the time of harvest before it should be applied onto the patient. And then uh, you can see that the Skin TE is really provided back as sort of an oatmeal-like paste, uh, which is then spread onto the wound, and then it can be dressed uh, with a variety of different dressings, uh, similar to a skin graft. And so what, what is the technology behind this? And uh, the sort of aha moment and idea behind the uh, initial patent application was understanding um, that our body uh, has already developed a, a lot of robust systems to heal itself. Our skin suffers thousands of cutaneous injuries in our lifetimes and is ob obviously able to heal to maintain that barrier function. And these stem cell populations uh, that are uh, understood to be involved have really been you know, well-defined over the last 30 years of elegant research. Um, and these populations are found within the follicular bulge, um, interfollicular dermis, and the sebaceous glands. And what our technology is really not focused on one or two of these cell types, um, but really on these sort of stem cell niches uh, that have evolved to be able to heal the body together and understanding on how we can activate these niches and to a certain degree keep them together through our process so that they can do what they've evolved to do, which is heal skin. And so uh, our product is registered through the 361 HCTP pathway, meaning it is minimally manipulated. It is autologous. This is from the patient for the patient, and it's also homologous. This is skin for skin. We're not taking fat and you know, trying to inject it, uh, let's say. And additionally, we comply with the um, uh, amount of proved materials that you can combine your product with. Um, and you know, why do we really focus on this functional skin? You know, there's a lot of products out there that can provide a barrier function or help close wounds with just a simple barrier function, but what we're really func uh, focused on is what is skin designed to do. It's not just a barrier that we often take for uh, granted, but has a lot of different roles, in including sensory, thermal regulation, sweat production, um, and it has a, a very complex structure, and it is the largest organ in our body, where you have uh, not just that epidermal keratinocyte layer, but those deep dermal structures and those appendages that give skin its full function, and that's what we've really focused on. 
And so if you look at a lot of current treatment options, that's where the, that functionality can often uh, sort of lack. If you think about it, the, the many different sca scaffolds and matrices that are available, you know, uh, these are really providing, again, a temporary barrier to a wound and then trying to uh, provide uh, a sort of pro-healing environment for the remaining tissue of the patient to try and close over this large defect. Um, additionally, you have more complex advanced scaffolds that might be combined with cells. Uh, these are allogeneic keratinocytes, allogeneic fibroblasts, but those cells have been shown time and time again, they're not integrating into the wound and providing new tissue. They are simply protein factories that are again providing more signaling for the remaining tissue of the patient to try and close the wound over. And uh, neither of these will really work for large full thickness injuries that you might have in a burn patient, let's say, where you have 30% of your body has been totally destroyed. Our body has not evolved to heal a 30% burn injury, and so it needs help. And so current approaches, your gold standard is a split thickness skin graft where you're sort of shaving the top part of the skin from one part of your body and transferring it over to this burn injury. Uh, you're only taking the top part of the skin um, because if you took all of the skin, you would have just now created another defect. But by taking just the top part, you're leaving behind those potent stem cell populations which can replace that harvest. But what that means is on your treatment site, you now only have just that epithelial keratinocyte layer that doesn't have the sweat glands, it doesn't have the sebaceous glands or the uh, hair follicles, and, and you get that sort of alligator skin-like appearance that is often very dry, it often breaks down, and you know one of the things that uh, burn patients will complain of is debilitating uh, itchiness uh, because of that. And then um, you also have full thickness skin grafts, but again, um, you're sort of creating a defect, a treated defect, and so these are really limited in size uh, and often reserved for places like the face and hand. And so, you know, what we feel is sort of the unique aspect of skin TE is that we're starting with that full thickness skin harvest, but our technology allows that small harvest to treat a much larger area. And this is a, a publication of one of our uh, early cases. And as you can imagine, as a new product, you often get tested against uh, cases that have failed multiple treatments. And this was a 31 otherwise healthy uh, gentleman who was actually dragged underneath a car in a motorcycle accident and developed two large uh, uh, injuries on his lower legs. Um, on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see um, uh, on his left leg was treated with a split thickness skin graft, which successfully took, but his right leg, for whatever reason, failed two of these applications and for a year and a half remained open as a, a large, um, you know, smelly, painful wound that he had to take disability, had to stop working, was very depressed, and this, this really affected him. Um, and uh, uh, one of our early providers, this is a single application of skin TE, um, was about a, a 10 centimeter harvest taken from his groin, closed primarily, um, and was able to close the leg uh, with that single application. Uh, we're showing here the, the picture, uh, which is at about 18 months, um, but this was closed much earlier, but what you actually see is that the wound continues to heal and get better, similar to native remodeling. Uh, which is important for us. This isn't perfect healing, but it's functional healing. And what we showed here in the middle where we're testing proprioception, if you look at a split thickness skin graft, um, as is, is expected and has been previously published, it has reduced sensation because it doesn't have those dermal structures. We have native skin in the middle, uh, so the smaller the uh, bar, the more uh, uh, sensation differentiation that tissue has, and next to it you see skin TE. On the right-hand side here, at the, the top row, we have, um, this is all laser confocal microscopy of hair follicles, and so we have a hair follicle removed from his native skin, and be beneath that is a hair follicle that was in the skin TE treated area, regenerated by skin TE. And why do we care about this so much is that our technology is leveraging these well-known stem cell populations that reside in the follicular bulge, and so that for us, it's incredibly encouraging that we're able to recapitulate the native structure of a hair follicle, because that's where the healing process is really coming from. And so uh, since then, we've treated well over 300 uh, uh, patients commercially in addition to our clinical trials. And uh, here are just a, a representative uh, run through. We have uh, diabetic foot ulcers, uh, which obviously are, are difficult to treat, um, as well as a, a large venous leg ulcer, which uh, also failed um, uh, split thickness skin graft treatment. We have chronic wounds that developed from traumatic wounds. This is a necrotizing fasciitis wound of a leg. Um, we also uh, see 
favorable results in sacral ulcers, which are uh, really becoming a scourge of the, the healthcare system, um, as well as these acute traumatic injuries where you have exposure of deep structures such as bone and tendon, which this would traditionally require uh, um, a, a, a free tissue uh, vascularized transfer, which is a very uh, involved procedure versus this sort of 30 minute uh, simple application that the patient can go home after. Um, and again, you know, we're not saying that this is going to be perfect healing, but what it really is is functional healing, which is critical for these patients. Additionally, uh, we've seen success in large burn patients uh, where, again, uh, this was an early case um, where the provider's back was against the wall, if you will. She was a 70% TBSA, simply didn't have enough skin. And um, uh, this was 14 centimeters uh, harvest, which actually treated both of her legs. And we actually have serial biopsies on this patient that we'll be publishing soon. Um, so again, moving to the clinical trials, five currently underway, a couple under planning, uh, two large randomized control trials, one in diabetic foot ulcers, one in venous leg ulcers. These are over 100 patients each with one-to-one -one randomization comparing skin TE to the standard of care. Um, and uh, as well as uh, we had the two pilot trials that we used to design these trials that uh, should be published uh, later on this year, uh, early next year, and we're hoping that the interim results, at least for the diabetic foot ulcer trial, should be coming out uh, early next year uh, as, as with the entire trial finishing enrollment up towards the end of next year as well. Uh, additionally, we'll be presenting some of our interim results on our uh, burn trial um, uh, later or in early next year, um, as well as our uh, several trials that we'll uh, launch. Um, just briefly going over some of the scientific recognition, we've had a couple uh, peer-reviewed publications, some of them I showed, 59 abstracts accepted, 22 of those were for podium presentations, our VLU pilot data was just awarded best abstract at the SAWC uh, that we'll be presenting uh, basically next week, uh, as well as our uh, initial 15 patient series uh, was awarded as a, one of the top abstracts at the ASPS last week as well. And um, again, you know, skin tea wasn't only designed to create functional skin, but really to um, reduce barriers and increase its ability to be applied because this is a very simple uh, procedure, both the harvest and the application. You don't need a surgeon, you don't need an anesthesiologist in an operating room. This can really be done at the bedside by medical providers, by podiatrists, by nurses, by PAs, and uh, not only in, in hospital settings or office settings or bedside settings, but even in more austere settings and resource limited settings. So this is something that uh, we're obviously interested in. Could this be used in a combat scenario or in third world countries where you don't have a lot of resources because really this is uh, just getting a clean wound bed and applying that paste. Uh, and additionally, this isn't just going after one wound type. If you have a cutaneous wound, you can essentially use uh, skin TE. And looking at our market, we really see it falling into three large buckets. We have the chronic wounds uh, with the uh, venous leg ulcers, um, which is uh, you know, affecting over a half a million Americans a year. You have diabetic foot ulcers, which are affecting one to two million Americans a year. You have pressure ulcers, uh, which are causing you know, well over a half a million hospitalizations a year. And then you also have your more inpatient uh, complex wounds, such as your burn wounds, which affect about 40,000 Americans a, uh, a year. And then you have your wounds from surgical procedures and trauma wounds that that are also uh, several hundred thousand patients a year. So really a broad ability to apply this product across these different markets. In uh, our commercialization phase currently, we are in a regional market release, and what that really means is that we're focused on large metropolitan areas across the country um, and plan on having a full national release uh, with the further development of our sales force later in two uh, 2020. And looking at reimbursement, sort of tying back to those different uh, um, wound markets, if you will, uh, we've had uh, successful reimbursement um, in the hospital inpatient setting under the bundled DRG payments, as well as the outpatient settings with the bundled facility payment payments, as well as the physician outpatient office as well. And just a brief financial snapshot, our cash, cash equivalents, short-term investments were 58.2 million at the end of Q2. Um, we had a financing round in April 2019, and we have about uh, 25.8 million shares um, outstanding uh, as of August. In looking at our management team, the uh, team is led by the Office of the Chief Executive with uh, David Seberg as president, Richard Haig is a Chief Operating Officer, and Paul Mann, as well as another, um, uh, as well as a management team that has a lot of expertise in the regenerative um, uh, biology uh, technologies, and we have uh, a board of directors with six independent board members uh, that uh, have a nice uh, array of skills from both um, financing as well as regulatory and uh, technical um, expertise. And with that, I'll thank you for your time and take any questions.